Let's talk some toys in here. <laughs> hey, how's everybody doing today? It's the man child. Okay, so today for review, gonna go over the Master Universe, Masterverse, Revolution, Hordak figure, part of the Wave 13 series of figures, and he will be the final or last figure I'm reviewing with Wave 13. Um, so there was four figures, figures in total. You can go check those out on my channel. So we had Leech, Thunder Punch, Hey Man, Cyclone, and now Hordak from the Revolution cartoon. I believe there's two other figures coming as part of the Wave 13. It will be the New Eternia Merman and New Eternia Battle Armored Skeletor. But I think they're going to be larger boxes, more accessories, and it might be exclusives. I'm not sure yet, but they'll be part of series, and they should be coming next couple months. I look forward to those two. Anyway, so yeah, we get a new Hordak, again from Revolution Cartoon, looking good. Has, you know, um, very reminiscent, going back to how Hordak always looked, but man, some redesign with the robe. Kind of reminds me of something similar to going back to the Horde Prime figure a little bit, you know, Classic Slime. You know, with the, uh, yeah, the robe, the bad symbol, stuff like that. I like the head sculpt, creepy looking, but as you can see on the art, the art on the box, which looks really cool, he has an open mouth with the bloody, uh, yeah, serrated teeth that Hordak always had going back to like the vintage figure and classics and stuff like that. And this one comes with a closed mouth, and I don't think it comes with a second head. So, yeah, I'm a little disappointed by that, to be honest. I, I always like certain figures, especially with Hordak with the open mouth. He doesn't have one, but anyway... It is what it is. Um, still a cool head sculpt. So yeah, we'll go, dropping down to the lower part of the art here, we have some Horde Troopers. Um, they kind of look like the new Attorney Horde Troopers that's going to be coming through Mattel Creations, I believe, this summer. There's plenty of images online. They look awesome. And I think what's neat, too, with the Masterverse, or this revolution bringing us a Horde act from that cartoon, is that it opens the door for other Horde characters as part of the revolution, or maybe new Attorney line. And now, here's a quick look with the image or art on back of Hordak's box. So, yeah, just picture image of Hordak figure himself holding the Horde staff, which is another cool accessory, kind of rare. I think the classics, you've only seen that accessory once or twice um, with the main Hordak figure and, I think, accessory pack. He has his Horde uh, army background, getting ready to go to war. There's tanks, you can see the fighters in the background. And here's a closer look at Hordak's new bio. You want to pause and read that. And then dropping down, these are all four figures that's part of the Wave 13 series, which, as I already mentioned, I'll review. And I'll bring him in for comparisons with this Hordak later on. And then jumping back up to the art on the right-hand side of the box, looking in from the window. So, yeah, we just have Hordak once again standing holding the staff. And another picture, that face sculpt with the uh, teeth, that, that grinning smile. Again, man, I wish we had a head like that. Or if not, somebody's going to make a custom. And now here's a quick look with the art on the left-hand side of the box. So, yeah, just going down, we just have some more Horde Troopers there. That's the... Uh, Cape spilling over from the front of Hordak, looks like. And um, this looks like, okay, motherboard in the background, um, uh, glowing. All right, and here's a quick look around with Hordak and all his accessories out of box. Um, yeah, he really doesn't come with much, just a staff and a couple hands. So you get. And now, bringing Hordak in for a closer look at the head and head sculpt. Um, yeah, really cool, you know, creepy looking. I like it. The overall uh, paint, as far as the main skull, is like a, yeah, dirty bone color, right? Bone, same thing with his hands. Uh, the gray is pretty neat around the eyes. I really like the design of the eyes. You can see the red, the way they're, I mean, they're sculpted, obviously, but it's like, a, um, yeah, I guess just red. It almost looks like there's little lenses in there in my light, but just red paint in there inside them from what I can see. I mean, as a point, it's part of his chin bone. I like the extra detail with the, um, spines on top of his skull there casted. It actually looks like a separate piece glued into the skull in a gold color. He has the pointy ears in the back with some gray in it. Uh, yeah, gray around the face. <clears throat> um, now, as far as the articulation with this head, it, it's really tight inside this hood. So you can only go, like, down about that far, right? You can only go back, so you can hit the hood. You can turn, yeah, not much. <laughs> left to right, that's about it. Okay, yeah, left to right that way. All right. Um, yeah, he has, like, a, uh, a grin going down on his face there. Not a grin, but just, um... A uh, very mean look, but again, it's, uh, man, I really wish he had teeth in there. That's just me. That would have just took this, that head up to another notch, or he came out with another head. That's what he really needed. Not the worst thing, but, yeah, I would have really preferred that. Um, side that is a cool head sculpt. So, he has this, uh, he has a collar, as you can see. That's all part of the armor, painted red, the main armor on the chest. He has, so all right, we already looked at the hood, so spinning him around, right? You can see the hood with the armor now. Yeah, that's really hard. I mean, it's, you know, you can pull the tip of it back a little bit, back and forth. 
What I notice with this figure, though, I don't see anything that, um, I don't notice that anything comes apart. Uh, so the hood, the collar, the main armor with the bat symbol on it is all one piece, from what I can see. I mean, even these, so you have like this reinforced steel plating in the back. Um, that's painted in like a, yeah, metallic silver color, right? So the hood's painted black, has a red trim. Okay, you have these shoulder pieces that are pretty cool. Again, all part of, well, I don't know if they're separate. They might be, but they're glued on. And they're really, again, they barely, you can move them, but they, they don't move much. Um, On both the left and right side, I mean, that way you could pull up. But yeah, it feels like I'm going to snap something or just going to bend the hood him. So it's all part of that from what I can see. Um, so moving down, yeah, we have the, uh, it's like the iconic cord bat. That's part of the sculpt. It's not a separate piece plugged in like the leech figure was. Paint it again to, as part, okay, so the armored silver. Yeah, we got a few different things going on here. It almost seems to me as everything was originally cast, maybe in black, like the hood, and then the silver was painted, the red was painted, the bat, I guess. So it's like to me. Um, so moving the arm up, you can see he has the, um, Pieces that support the armored. I'm gonna so there's a okay, we'll look at that in a minute. In the back on both sides, and it's like it seems like it's separate from this. Okay, it is a separate piece from the buck, this whole robe design. So this is like he's wearing a whole robe or a cloak going all the way down, right? You can see the bottom, here's the belt. We'll get into that soon. Just kind of jumping around here trying to figure this out. Um, all right, so anyway, as far as the articulation with the armor piece on, and then he has this. Yeah, piece. It's also part of the armor, like a tassel piece going down, or it's a it's a horde necktie, <laughs> some kind of tassel. But yeah, pretty soft, as you can see. So as far as the ab with the armor on, you can spin left to right, right. He can go down about that far, all the way back. And again, so I'm just um, yeah, this is definitely a separate piece, but I don't I don't understand how to have it on. This, I thought maybe this would pull off over the head or something. Doesn't look like it. I'll have to. I'll pu pull the head off in a minute. And we'll try it out. Um, but yeah, that's all the designs under it, right? So here's a cape. Let's take a look at that. Just that typical Masterverse fabric, like Shearer or something had. Um, short with a point at the end. Very flexible. Doesn't have a wire in it. Okay, we already looked at the back. Um, so let's see. Going back to the front once again. Uh, so as far as the arms now, so we'll go to the right arm. It's like a just a basic Masterverse style arm, molded in a black color. So we already talked about the shoulder pads now. You can still go all the way up with the arm, but, you know, it, this does have enough room to move, right? Uh, we can go forward, back. We have the bicep swivel. You can still bend the um, arm all the way to the face. Uh, he has these, yeah, cool gauntlets there on the um, both sides are identical, right? They're just cast in black, pretty soft. You can see the red highlights and trim painted on the top and bottom, matched the other red colors. They look like um, they look like they might be separate, but they're glued on. It doesn't look like something's gonna come off, right? So let me go to the left side. Yeah, you can pull it back, but even though you do, I can see glue holding it. So it's so I think anyway. So it's almost like the um, forearm guard. The forearm is its own piece, and these are separate. Maybe kind of hard to tell, to be honest. Anyway, they don't come off. That's you know it is what it is. So as far as far as the hands, he comes with on the right side the um, it's like a semi-open hand, but it has like a pointing finger. I want to call it cast spells or something, and that's on a hinge joint that can go all the way in and out, spin, and then he has a the staff grabbing hand or um, yeah semi-closed hand once again for weapons that can spin. Also has a hinge joint going in and out. The nails are painted black, which is pretty cool, you know, an extra detail, and then they're also cast in the bone bonish color to match the head. Okay, so jumping back up to the head once again. So, yeah, obviously I removed it. You can see the ball peg inside had a neck as extended. It's, yeah, like a great piece. Right, you have, again, it's like the black. Yeah, this whole row piece is its own thing. But with the head off, let me see if this comes off now. You would think with that off, maybe it's hindering this. The arms don't come out. They never did a Masterverse. But, yeah, these straps underneath definitely move back and forth. And this cape, too, I thought maybe you snapped this apart. You see that? It's pegged. Yeah, I'll break it. It's like it's pegged inside there. And this armor or something between the armor, maybe the armor has a peg going back and under this um, strap to hold the cape. 
I mean, with customizer, you can definitely pop it off, but it's it's not something that's going to come off easy. On my finger, any, on this finger anyway that I can see, it's not meant to come off, you know, again, without customization. That's um, kind of strange. How about this? I pull this forward. Yeah, it's just like it's pegged and glued in there on my finger from what I can see. You can get a better look at the, the cut and everything now. And here's a little better look at the head off the body, right? See the oh, back of the skull and the uh, inside where the peg will sit. Okay, so obviously putting the head back on, moving down. Yeah, again, while the head was off, I really tried messing around with this. It is possible if you break this peg back here, cut that, pull a cape, and then maybe you could pull your arms up and slide this armor piece off from what I can see. But I, it's, it's, um, I don't think it's intended to come off without, you know, unless you want to customize it. I'm just going to leave it. It, all right, it is what it is. Again, it's his own thing. Um, so we already went down with this tassel piece. We know he can spin at the ab. He spins at the waist as well. Has this... Um, so this is, I guess, supposed to be part of the upper robe itself, everything, but a separate piece. And so is the red belt around, you know, if you ever wanted to take this off, the belt and probably this whole piece. I think they're two different... Or maybe the belt's separate. No, the belt is its own piece and so is this. Okay. Yeah, there's a way to heat these like loincloths, stretch them over the body, and remove the thigh. And you can take remove this whole piece you want to. Not that I'm going to do that, but that's the way I see it. So yeah, it's just a typical, yeah, regular belt, nothing special, right? Mold, you know, cast in a flat color. You can see the details going down to the lower part of this um, robe, I'm going to call it. Right? Um, so as far as the legs, checking out. So we just has some you know, Master style legs in... As far as the articulation with this robe on, so I'm going to pull it back a little bit. And, uh, yeah, it does hinder it. Get this piece out of the way. You can go out with a split about that far. Again, this gets in the way, but you can do that, you know. We'll move that way. You can kick forward, go back. Has the uh, thigh cut, as I mentioned, where you would remove these, remove this piece. Um, now, he also has the drop joints, I want to say, like the other Mass First figures. Yes. So see that? The hips, they can go up and down inside the hips. The legs now. Just push up and down, right? Kind of tight, but he does have them. Um, so aside that, let's see, Ken, where we at? All right, so side, thigh cut. He can bend at the knee all the way back and gets hindered by this, uh, yeah, robe or skirt piece, robe piece. Um, let's see, moving down here, legs are all the same. So now he has some new boots, which is pretty cool. It's kind of new style boot going back to that show. Check that out, right? It has like a, I guess, reminiscent of some type of bat symbol. The points paint it red, so you can spin at those boots. And I'm sure it didn't come off if you want them to. I'm not messing with that. Um, yeah, pretty cool detail. And then has its own, yeah, his own three-toed mechanical foot for Hordak. That's part of it, obviously. And as far as the articulation, go up, down, and rock side to side. As I already mentioned, the other leg and details are all the same. And now moving forward, as far as Hordak's accessories, he comes with the spare pair of punching fists for left and right side with the hinge joints that go in and out. Nothing special, but he does get them. And of course, they're casted again with the in that bone color and the well nails, at least the outer thumbs are painted black. And then for his last accessory, he gets the iconic cord staff or bat staff, which yeah, that's really cool. Again, it's kind of a rare piece. There was a couple of classics, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video. I like the overall detail, how the um, hand, you know, the color of the handles cast in a metallic gray. The bat's pretty neat. Um, yeah, extra detail up here too, and the metal spikes that's on top of the bat. Right, you got the um, yeah, like an orb with some claws on the lower end of the staff. It's um, mine is a little warped out of package, kind of that. It's not too soft or gummy plastic, you know. It's it's it is hard, but you got it's something you don't want to force because you will snap it. But yeah, it is cool. I'm glad he came with this. Okay, now I just put the staff in the left hand because, yeah, it's the main gripping hand and the pointing finger. I have him pointing directional like he's casting some magic. So there's a quick look at that setup. Um, that's all it comes with. <laughs> that's pretty much it in his overall setup. And, oh, I should mention, too, as far as the spare hands, or his hands, of course, he has on the arms, they're Origins pegs. Right? I just kind of noticed that. Um, where all the other new Eternia and newer Masterverse figures has those larger style pegs, so... Yeah, these are for origins, <clears throat> which is um yeah interesting. And now taking a look at a couple comparisons, and yeah, I want to say some mixing and matching of parts, but there's not really a lot we can do with him. I was hoping to at least switch the origins head on this body and put that head on the origins body, which yeah you can, but then it doesn't have no hood, and this definitely the origins head. When of course he has that cool looking sculpted shark teeth with the blood on it, red on it. That would have been fun on this body and would have matched, but not going to work. Um. 
All right, maybe I'll put the head on this body. It's not going to have a hood, but let's take a look at that. And now just look at that setup. So if you want to use your Origins Hordak with a uh, hoodless Hordak uh, head on that body, you can do that. Looks good. Fits the peg and articulates well. Something different. Um, Yeah, but then bringing this figure back and once again, just uh, I have the head off. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe we can go on. Now you have two hoods. Let me see. Nah, it's not. <laughs> look pretty neat. You get that on. Again, you want to customize, and yeah, I'm not gonna tell people to do that. Cut this hood back. And then you could put this. This would probably work. I don't know. Even then, these other outer collar pieces in the same. Be a lot of customizing. For the most part, it's not gonna work. But I want to try it. And now for another comparison. So once again, we have our new Revolution Hordak against the Princess of Power um, subline of Masterverse figures Hordak, right? Or filmation inspired in blue, which I really like this one the way it came out. Um, again, not really. Yeah, his armor's removable, but it's not going to work on this figure. I was hoping to take this piece off and try it on that figure in a blue body without cutting that thing in the back. I, I don't think you're supposed to. I'm, I'm not going to bother. I think it's possible, but not, not from what I can see on my figure. Anyway, that's those two together, and then I'm wondering if um, I can switch these heads around because he does have like a regular, you know, skull head. But his is even more narrow. Yeah, collar piece is also an issue, not to mention a hood, but uh, let me see. Let me try it. So yeah, through that Revolution Hordak head, obviously, on this Princess of Power or animation Masterverse body, or body. Um, yeah, it does work good on this because the hood piece, this does come off, but once you take it off, you got these pegs in the back that, that's how you remove the cape. I remember reviewing this a long time ago. Um, it works good, you know, it doesn't look bad, so you can just pop it on with this hood is what I'm saying. And it does articulate well. Can only go only go down about that far and back. Not much different than the other head. And of course, I put the staff in hand. So at least you get something out of that head with this body if you had it. And that other Hordak. And now, once again, jumping back to the Revolution Hordak body. Of course, I have that Princess, we'll call it the Filmation Hordak head on it. That looks really cool. It, uh, it's different. Um, it snaps right in, but this collar hinders it. It can barely move. You can turn a little bit that way, but you're not getting... Yeah, obviously, you're not going back and... That's as far as he's going forward. And across, I, of course, I put the crossbow and let's put it in the um, on the left hand to use that. And even a crossbow, it doesn't, it's kind of tricky. All right, if you get it back, it will catch like that. If you put it up here, it keeps falling off. So another neat setup with that head. But again, it's all, it's all you're going to do with it in this figure from what I can see. Okay, so moving forward with a few more comparisons. So once again, I just put the head and staff back on the Revolution Hordak, right? Um, overall setup. So here's a quick comparison between the Masterverse Shadow Weaver and Catra, which is part of the P.O.P. Princess of Power line, but it's the only Horde members we have from Masterverse. Um, yeah, again, I feel like the Revolution Horde Act might open up the door for, yeah, maybe newer Horde members, like a Shadow Weaver, different Catra, Leech, and stuff like that. And now for the next comparison, I just brought in the Princess of Power Masterverse Grizzler against our Revolution Horde Act, so let's do those two together. And now I also brought in that Wave 13 Leech against our Revolution Hordak. Now, he's technically part of the Princess of Power line. You know, I've heard many times, he is a little on the short side. I do have the drop joints legs all the way out, which in my video review, I didn't even know we had them. I couldn't move them. I finally figured it out. So it's those two together. It's, um, yeah, they work. You know, it's it, hopefully we get a different Leech to match that Revolution, a bigger one or a uh, new attorney one down a row. But, it, you know, it's good for what it is for now. And now here's a look with the new Wave 13 Thunder Punch He-Man against the Wave 13 Revolution Hordak. So that's those two together. And now for the last comparison, I just brought in the Wave 13 Cyclone figure against our Revolution Hordak figure. And of course, these are all four figures, part of Wave 13 series. As mentioned in the beginning of the video, I bring in for comparison. So um, that's about it. <laughs> it's pretty much my review on the Master Universe Revolution Hordak figure. You know, cool design. I mean, I really do. I like the armor. It had this tassel piece hangs off the robe. The head's pretty cool. Love that staff, but yeah, I really want the head with the serrated teeth. As I mentioned a few times, or at least a, very, you know, a second head would have been cool. And I wish there was an easier way to remove all this armor. I can't, mine's not coming off without breaking that peg in the back. I mean, it is meant to come off. They put it on, but it's, uh, I don't think it's designed to come off without customizing. Again, at least in mine, I'm not breaking it apart. And you can't really do too much with part swapping at the moment. I kind of feel like he was the black sheep of Wave 13, you know. Um, not, he has a cool design, but seems like when you get a wave of figures, Origins or just, say, Masterverse especially, you always have the one figure that's really cool, and they've just did a couple extra odds and ends, like heads and weapons and stuff like that, 
or made yeah pieces more removable. It would have took it up to the next notch. You know, they really spoiled Cyclone, Thunder Punch He Man, Leech too. Again, Leech's flaws is something's just he's on the short side, something between the legs and the head. It seems I don't know. I still like him. I love the design, but the whip, the crossbow, it, it's great. Cyclone 2 is another great figure. Side my QC issues with the cracks. I brought this up in his, you know, his video and a couple other videos. And two other people that also received Cyclone figures early on eBay. That's sort of coming in right now. Also had cracks on the outer dome. Now I'm not saying it's going to be a wide problem with every Cyclone figure, but it's an issue. That's three and mine and two others so far. These figures coming in. That's that. I don't like that, you know. But all right, maybe maybe just ours. Anyway. Hope we did answer everybody's questions. I appreciate everybody watching. Until next time, take care.